Good morning dear friends. Greetings in Jesus name. I am so glad to be with you for a few minutes as we together meditate on God's wonderful message for us today. Listen carefully and take it into your heart and let God's word speak to you continuously and guide your path. Today's meditation is taken from the gospel according to St John chapter 12 verses 1 to 8. and uh, the meditation is actually centered around two personalities uh, uh, today and then there are other two personalities which we will consider the following day on saturday and um, i would like to read this passage to refresh your memory what the story is all about six days before the passover jesus arrived at bethany where lazarus lived whom Jesus had raised from the dead here a dinner was given in Jesus honor Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him then Mary took about a pint of pure nard an expensive perfume she poured it on Jesus feet and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume but one of his disciples judas iscariot who was later to betray him objected why was in this perfume sold and the money given to the poor it was worth a year's wages he did not say this because he cared about the poor but because he was a thief As keeper of the money bag he used to help himself to what was put into it Leave her alone Jesus replied It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial You will always have the poor among you but you will not always have me Now let us visit a home in Bethany the village where Lazarus along with his two sisters Martha and Mary lived but we are going to visit another home of a man known as Simon the leper and you get this very clearly in the gospel according to St Mark the same incident is recorded by Mark also there he clearly mentioned who prepared the feast it was simon the leper known as leper now simon prepared a feast in honor of jesus lazarus also was uh, invited along with the sisters it was soon after lazarus was raised from the dead by the lord jesus christ it was a big feast jesus was the chief guest His disciples were with him. Lazarus's presence was very significant. He is the center of attraction. Who? Jesus. Lazarus's presence was very important, but the center of attraction was Jesus Christ alone. Simon invited Jesus. Here is a company of grateful people gathering together in a friend's house let us have a look at the main characters the main characters here was besides jesus let remember jesus was the most important person but other characters were simon the leper and uh, lazarus raised fry by jesus and then his sisters martha and mary So today we will look into the into the role of these two men Simon What was his role what what how, how, how do we know him Simon was healed probably by the Lord Jesus Christ And Lazarus was raised by the Lord Jesus Christ. What was Simon doing in this feast? Of course he prepared the feast and therefore Simon was entertaining the other guests. Simon knew Jesus. 
His acquaintance with Jesus must have been through his leprosy. And Jesus must have healed him and cleansed him. But he realized that his, his relationship with Jesus must go beyond mere acquaintanceship. It must be a companionship. Christ must sit at our table. That was his desire. In fellowship which would bring both Jesus and Simon into a, into a closer relationship. And an intimate relationship. Remember the two disciples of Jesus. On the day of his resurrection, these two disciples, not the apostles, they were not among the apostles, the twelve apostles, but there were so many other disciples of Jesus and these two were uh, his disciples following him. And remember on the day of resurrection, they heard the story of resurrection from these women. But these disciples were really confused and they got tired, tired of uh, physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually. They did not know what to believe and what not to believe. And so they decided to leave all behind and go back to their village. So they started walking about seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And as they were walking, their faces were downcast and they were so discouraged, many of you look at them. And suddenly a third person joined and walked with them. It was none other than the Lord Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. But they did not recognize him at all. And you know the conversation and how this man who joined with them really stirred up their hearts. And as they arrived at the village gate, Jesus pretended as if he would go on further. But these two disciples invited him. Friend, spend the night with us. And Jesus gladly went with them inside the house. And they sat together for the supper. And as they sat together for their meal, supper meal, suddenly Jesus, who was to be their guest, he suddenly became the host. He took the bread in his hand. He lifted it up to give thanks to God. And he was about to break when suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized that it was Jesus Christ. How did they recognize? Probably as they lifted up the bread and giving thanks, they must have noticed the near prayer, prayer's mark on his hand. Whatever, however they recognized, they recognized and Jesus suddenly disappeared. But the fire that was set by the Lord Jesus Christ, by what he spoke to them from the Moses down to Psalms and prophets and everyone. They, they walked, he walked with the disciples through the scriptures. And that is how. And when Jesus disappeared, suddenly they looked at each other and they said, Were not our hearts who were set on fire? And was it not true that we began to feel the fire burning within our hearts? as he spoke to us and my friends that is the most important thing that will happen to any of you even today you are discouraged you are disappointed you are broken you are completely dried all what you need is to sit with jesus and with his word and as the word of god begins to minister to you you begin to understand Jesus. It is only when you sit in fellowship and in communion like these disciples did with Jesus, you will ever know Jesus Christ. And so I pray that you will learn that lesson today. Whenever you feel discouraged, not only whenever, every moment, every day, you sit, then there will be no place for discouragement in your life. But anyway, that is the way that uh, these, this, this, this Simon, his desire was that Jesus must sit at his table. And that means a closer fellowship and a closer communion which would bring Jesus closer to you in relationship. And uh, uh, they, 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 that's what happened here. 
Here we have Simon sitting with Jesus. It is not Christ receiving the sinner, but the sinner receiving Jesus Christ. And that is the picture we have here. Simon entertaining. And through entertaining, by entertaining Jesus, the chief guest, he became a close to him. So that is about Simon. And the second personality is Lazarus. What is he doing? What is his role? He is feasting. Now, feasting with Jesus is a picture of a feasting on Jesus and thus drawing closer to Jesus Christ. A picture of a sinner saved by Christ's grace. Now drawing closer to Jesus to feast with him and a feast on him. What a feast and what a company. Simon healed and Lazarus raised. Jesus the healer and Jesus the raiser. We do not know how Lazarus first came in contact with Jesus. But it was his death that brought about a closeness with Jesus. What a way to come close to Jesus Christ. Now Lazarus owes everything to Jesus. He owes Jesus his life, his breath, his body, his health, his very existence. Everything he owes to Jesus. Now only one thing that matters. Be a living witness by being with Jesus and feasting on him and feasting with him. My friends, remember this. You remember the terrible accident, you almost died, but God's mercy has kept you alive and given you a new life. Every time something like that happens, Always remember, the life now you live is not yours. It is an extended life God in His mercy has granted you. Therefore, life is not to be spent in your way. Always remember, have that desire. Now, the only thing that matters is bear witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Let it be your desire. How many times he has been very merciful to you. He has been very kind to you. In his grace and mercy kept you alive. And given you another new day, my friends. Every day is a precious gift. When you went to, to sleep last night, there was no guarantee that you will wake up in the morning breathing. How many thousands have left this world even this morning? But you are still alive. Give him the glory and honor and praise. In fact, every moment is a precious gift. When you come out of your home and go into your office or school or college, your workplace, there is no guarantee that you will take another step or you will return back home safe. But he keeps you alive. So let us not be proud. Let us always remember the goodness of the Lord and be a witness for him, my friend. This is God's will for you. God bless you through this meditation. Learn the lesson and live for Christ and Christ alone. And this is a wonderful day. Don't waste this day. Live for him and enjoy your life. Amen.